Elixir. Adapted from the majestic Latin word. Uh, I don't fucking know. So, you've been seeing all these uh, elixir fragrances. What does it mean? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll let you in on the secret. You see, there's been Eau de Parfum, there's been Parfum, and now finally, we're up to the ultimate, the final end game of fragrances. Elixir. And do you know what it means? Do you know what it really means? It means absolutely nothing. It's just a marketing thing. It's what we call in the trade, utter bollocks. But don't click away just yet now that you know the answer, because I'm going to thoroughly explain to you what's going on and how you will never be fooled by absolute perfumery marketing bollocks again. You see, marketing bollocks in fragrance, and especially men's fragrances, started about well, right about the same time that I actually got into fragrances. But you see, the marketing of the 2010s men's fragrances had to sort of rewrite the history of the 90s. So in the 80s and the 90s, Eau de Parfum was perfume. And men were advertised that perfume wasn't for them, cologne was for them. And it's all based on the Eau de Cologne, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum thing, which there is a sort of a basis for it, but it is mostly just nonsense. So the theory goes, okay, when you have a fragrance, you have a certain amount of oils and then you have a certain amount of perfumier alcohol. And the amount of essential oils or, you know, aroma chemicals or whatever that's in there ratio to the amount of alcohol, which is basically like a dilution of the oils, that is like eau de cologne is the lowest, eau de toilette is like middle, and eau de parfum is perfume, and that's the highest. But that meant that women's fragrances were stronger than men's. And what did men want in the 2010s? They wanted stronger men's fragrances. And this is where sort of a little bit of a battle of attrition happened. IFRA, which is kind of like a fragrance uh, regulations agency, they have been cracking down on aroma chemicals and they've been cracking down on fragrances and they've been cracking down on, you know, substances that you can use in fragrances, ingredients that you can use in fragrances. And so that meant that, that the fragrances were starting to get weaker and people were starting to notice that. So the way that they tried to answer that marketing wise was, oh, well, we're just upping the concentration of oils. And so then you start getting the eau de parfum craze. And we got some good fragrances out of it. My favorite Le Nuit de Lomme of all time is uh, Le Nuit de Lomme Eau de Parfum. Great fragrance. And that was how it was marketed. Oh, it's the Eau de Parfum version. It's stronger than the Eau de Toilette version. And I smelt it and I was like, wow, that is stronger. But the notes have changed. Maybe it's just something to do with the oils. It was complete bollocks. They just created a new fragrance. And maybe they'd done something to the oils. Maybe they hadn't. You wouldn't know. But that was the Eau de Parfum kind of thing. We got loads of different Eau de Parfum flankers. This was being marketed as men reclaiming their strong fragrances back. And it was the diminishing of the term perfume. Of course, you know, still now, um, women's fragrances are referred to as perfume and men's fragrances are refer referred to as cologne and aftershave. But hey, bro, I've got this fragrance, but it's an eau de parfum concentration. Oh, right, yeah, it's a lot stronger. It, it, it might be, it might not be, it's just puffery, it's, it's marketing. Anyway, everybody got used to that. I'm sorry that I'm drinking for this, it's kind of unprofessional, but it's just, there's so much bollocks in the fragrance marketing. I, I need, I just, you know, just something to just take the edge off, you know what I mean? Because things are about to get really fucking stupid up in here. So then the male consumer got used to eau de parfum and then they were like, okay, well, well, don't worry about that, you know, that eau de parfum, thing it's, it's it's like they're a drug dealer or something it's like oh that that shit that i gave you last year i ain't nothing compared to what we got now now we've got parfum and that was the parfum phase which is still kind of going on to a degree now it's like tom ford ombre leather parfum and everything's like parfum le nuit de l'homme le parfum one million parfum le mal le parfum and but <sighs> Again, like they're, they're, they're trying to sort of convince you that it's a concentration change, but it's not. The whole fragrances were changing. Like One Million La Parfum is pretty much the same projection longevity, if not actually a little bit weaker than the original One Million. And you see, we have to remember that like some of the most strongest men's fragrances of all time, like La Mal, back in the 90s, if you smelled La Mal, oh my God, you could take out the entire club. Uh, Angel Men, the original, Beast mode, one million beast mode. These were all eau de toilettes, but it's just that they had better quality of ingredients. They had better quality of aroma chemicals and compounds to play to play along with. They don't have that as much now, and but yet the male consumer wants stronger fragrances, and so round and round we go. So now it's parfum, and I think that the most egregious uh, example of this is ombre leather parfum. So I've got both of these fragrances. 
And the reason why I got ombre leather apart from is because I wanted to wear ombre leather in spring and summer. Yes, that's right. Ombre leather le parfum or parfum or whatever it is, is weaker than ombre leather, even though it's a parfum concentration. And that's why it's touted at. This is the highest concentration of uh, oils that you're gonna get. It's not true. Fragrance is like, um, you know, this is ironically Elixir by Centauri and um, this one, Keese by Slumberhouse. These aren't regulated by IFRA. These aren't regulated by standard fragrance bodies. So that means that these are actually the closest thing to actual parfums. Like these are basically just the essential oils with not a lot of perfumier uh, alcohol in it. These are pretty much like undiluted. You couldn't have a fragrance company like Jean-Paul Gaultier or Christian Dior just selling off pure perfume fragrances that would be cost-effective. It just wouldn't work. But more ironically, more independent brands like this and, and Aaron Terrence Hughes, they're allowed to bend or even sometimes like fully break the rules. Like Keist and uh, elixir, Centauri Elixir could kick all of the parfums asses in projection longevity because this is the real deal. This is the real parfum, not just a marketing ploy. Anyway, you got used to that. The parfum thing, everybody got used to that. Well, what are we gonna do? Our consumers are numbed to the eau de parfum and the parfum, what are we gonna do? And so they make up this whole new thing, which is, oh, well, it's, it's Elixir. And if you type in on Google, what is Elixir? What does fragrance Elixir means? It will actually say to you, oh, well, you know, Elixir is like the highest concentration of perfumier oils that you can, uh, that you can get. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh my God. Stop fucking lying. I, I promise you it'll be like X straight to parfum next or they won't probably be able to legally say that. But it'd be like X straight a la parfum. That's what it'll be. It'll be something like that. To just confuse you. Oh, this is even stronger. It's not. This Lamal elixir is great, but I've got actual original Lamal from back in the 90s, well, mid 2000s, which was still very strong actually. And that kicks this fragrance's ass with projection longevity. Now don't get me wrong, great projection longevity with elixir and with Sauvage elixir. But is anybody gonna say to me with all seriousness that what, like they freaking up the concentration of Sauvage and suddenly fucking lavender turned up? It's just a different fragrance. Most of the elixirs I've really enjoyed. I, I like Boss Bottled Elixir, I like Lamal Elixir, I like Dior Sauvage Elixir. One Million Elixir was redundant if you own One Million Parfum, in my opinion. But yeah, like it's just a load of marketing fluff. Like I said, not saying these elixir fragrances are awful, um, they're not. In fact, I like most of them, but if you're expecting that you're gonna get uh, better projection and better longevity, that's just not how this is gonna work out, okay? You've been warned, I hope that you leave this video a little bit wiser, and just, you know, it's marketing bollocks. Anyway, I'm The Fragrance Place, thanks for watching, bye.